Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide online business mediation and valuation services based out of St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we're actually going to discuss money court, financial and business disputes, which actually is a little bit of a show. And um, money court it has been, it has had one, uh, one season so far. And we are actually talking today with Eric Schatz, who is the executive producer of Money Court. And they are looking for kind of additional companies for the second um, season. Well, and I think when we get into some family businesses, what we're seeing right now is the pandemic has kind of pushed businesses to decide do you want to continue doing what you're doing? Do you want to refigure it out? Or do you want to quit? And you have a lot of baby boomers that are kind of like, eh, I don't know if I want to refigure it out, but my son or my grandson wants to go to five different locations. And I just, can't we just sit here and do everything the same? You know, so I think a lot of those things are happening in family businesses. Are those you know, could those also create kind of a situation? Uh, yes. Family businesses are a great area. I mean, I'm, I run a family business. Like, so my son works with it. My wife works with us. All my other kids who have I, through their lives have worked for us. I've kept it part of what we are. So I run that and I'm very partial to running a family business, but there's also an understanding and, and how you run that. And we had a case that we were working on where it was a father, son uh, owned a theater uh, the son wanted to modernize the theater. The father didn't want to put a penny into the theater. The kid was like, dad, the future's my friends. They book it online with their telephones. And the dad's like got a rotary phone in his home and doesn't understand how, a, how would an app help my theater? There's a generational understanding of how things happen. And, you know, not that I am the, the, the youngest one, but <laughs> clearly, you know, youth has its advantages. There's a lack of fear. There's a lack of understanding. You know, and, and to that end, some of the naivete is good, possibly, in a family business. You have to be open to it. But if it's the father relationship in the family and the son, it's different in business where my son runs development for us. You know, and he has an idea. He, I can't be the father. It's a right. business at that point. Mm -hmm. And you have to be agree like that. Does it come up? Is it important to Kevin or important to the show to let people save face? I mean, I, I know when I'm negotiating, you know, somebody might be right and somebody might be wrong, but you don't really resolve disputes by saying, you know, okay, I agree. I'm an idiot and I made everything. I mean, that how does that factor in the, the way people are going to leave and the taste in their mouth when it's all said and done and their prospects for interacting socially well after such a dispute like that's going to be aired publicly on your show? Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> has a very um, hardcore belief that business is business, but don't be an idiot and ruin your family. I mean, I think he's very smart about how to assess it as a business evaluation. I'm looking from business. I don't care what the dynamic is. Here's the business, the ridiculous business decision. It's a smart business decision. What he can't stand is when you ask somebody the numbers of the thing, like, let's just go over the math. We had somebody who gave us a case, so they had a great case, that they were writing books and now they want to make a play and, you know, have you saw and the and the hardcore question is how many books have you sold? Zero. <laughs> well, okay, let's just evaluate the company. Melissa's world, what's that company worth? Well, let's go on your sale. <laughs> Zero. Now you want to take more money and put it into a play based on the books that you haven't sold. Well, that's a very difficult kind of world to dive into because it's all at that point, it's all gray. Mm -hmm. It's worth everything, and the play can be a hit. Or you could look at the track record of plays that are successful that create businesses. Also, zero. So, you know, you have to be able to do that. As producers, we like to set the table, let the people come in and tell their own stories. We don't tell them. We don't, we don't shape them. We don't do anything other than say, here's the format where you can be heard fairly and cleanly. Okay? Mm -hmm. You're you. You do what you put yourself out there. And well, you, I I'm saying Randy's worked with a few of the housewives. <laughs> you know, they put themselves out there and that's their brand for better or worse, regardless of what you think, you know, leopards don't change their spots. I mean, it is one of those things where you're going to put yourself out there. So if they do it to themselves, we will never do it to them. We won't mm -hmm. make fun of them. We won't chastise them. Kevin will push hard saying, how are you in a business where you don't know what your numbers are? But that's fair game. Mm -hmm. that's a fair deal. He won't say you're an idiot. 
because that's just not the case. And we well, and the, the issue with these disputes is that nobody really is the idiot. That's the fascinating part is that with money, there is emotion and there is psychology that kind of confuses everything. So Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary can look like look very clearly at the money. I can look very clearly at the money, you know, or the numbers and be like, well, how are you guys getting this confused? Well, they get it confused because there's emotion, there's family issues. Like, is this really a dispute about expanding the theater and putting in, you know, wonderful seating? No, it's probably about the father and the son have always had some sort of issue in decision making. And it's, it's getting wrapped up in an actual, dis you know, like a, a disagreement. So I think that a lot of times somebody like Kevin can see through the stuff, but right? The, and also is in a case like that, which makes it interesting and complicated is, okay, so it's going to take 50 grand to redo the theater, throwing out numbers. Not, I'm, this is, a, you know, $50,000. Well, that's a lot of money in a pandemic where people aren't going to theaters. That's a better argument than I don't like modernization. Right. Like, so I think sometimes hearing what it is and giving logic to what it is, or this is the time to spend money because people are going to start going to theaters and they're going to want clean seats. They're going to want safe. They're going to want distance. They're going to, you know, I can argue both sides of it depending on, on what's happening. And I think that's what you have to see through, but you have to find out what, the, what you're saying, Melissa, is find the relationship core at the, at the essence of it. And is that the issue? Are you having daddy issues or is this a business issue? Mm -hmm. And I, I imagine he's very good at reality testing, right? People oh, yeah. smack right up against reality. And I'm sure you'll have people on the show that say, but it was my idea. I get the value. You know, I mean, what's, what's an idea worth without putting it in, in, into place and implementing well, some it? Some people say, I can't tell you what my idea is on television. Are you worried we're going to steal it? Is that, no, no, someone will steal my idea. Well, it can't, can't help that person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I think the biggest problem with business is common sense. Like people, they lose their minds over money and things that's just common sense. Just if you look up and analyze it very basically, most of the things are not as, there are complications and nuances within all of that. It's like in the, in the divorce business, there's a lot of nuance and things that can get through things that you have to pay attention to. But again, common sense prevails. You know, you're going to lose 50%. That's the way it's going to go down. Okay. What that is or what the percentage of that is, you just have to come into and understand both sides of it. And I think that's, that's funny. People always say they want to stay in the lifestyle to which they become accustomed. Well, then yeah. stay married because you can't live in two houses on the same income. It just yeah. math doesn't doesn't add up. I did tell my son that as well as he runs the business. <laughs>